Congresswoman Jackie Speer is the founder and co-chair of the Congressional Watchdog Caucus. She is a vocal champion of whistleblower rights, having introduced many pieces of legislation to protect whistleblowers and handle numerous whistleblower cases during her time on the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform, the House Armed Services Committee, and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. She is one of the few members of Congress who has established a whistleblower hotline in her office. Please join me in welcoming Congressman Speer, Congresswoman Speer. Thank you. I am, I'm honored to be here, and as I understand it, there are at least 20 whistleblowers in this audience today. And I want to speak directly to you at first. You are more than courageous. You are better Americans than some who even represent districts in Congress. And we don't do enough for you. So I'm here to say how deeply appreciative I am and the American people are for your dedication, your commitment, your courage, and your persistence. Now, I want to give you a little bit of background of how I became so committed to whistleblowers. I was in the state legislature in California for 18 years. For eight of those years, I was chair in the state senate of a committee of government oversight. And we decided that in order to do that job and do it well, we should create a hotline, which we did. We had no expectations of what would come through that. But over the course of three or four months, that phone would ring and ring and ring. And virtually all of the whistleblower complaints were about the Department of Corrections in the state of California. Now, the Department of Corrections in the state of California is held in high esteem, in part because there is a very powerful correctional guards union that has, over the history of the state, um, given about a million dollars per election cycle per governor candidate. So as time w went on, they became more and more entrenched. Over the course of that three-month period, we developed enough material to do three years of comprehensive hearings on the Correctional Guards Union and on the Department of Corrections. And we made lots of changes, and we improved it dramatically. I remember one colleague coming up to me and saying, I am so glad you're doing this, but there's no way I could be part of this. And I can tell you, much like the stories you could probably tell me, that it cost me. Because in a certain way, we were whistleblowers. I subsequently ran for Lieutenant Governor of California and lost. And to a significant degree, because the Correctional Guards Union um, worked in that campaign to make sure I didn't get elected. It was the right thing to do. I'm proud that I was part of that effort. It's the right thing for you to do, and I'm proud that you've been part of the effort on a federal level. So um, I want to first say to the whistleblowers, thank you. Thank you for the taxpayers of this country. They expect us to do the right thing. As federal employees, they expect us to make sure that every dollar that is spent is spent wisely. So when you speak up, it's really um, the American thing to do. You are true pa patriots, and I appreciate that more than words can say. I want to tell you about two um, whistleblowers that I've become familiar with their stories. Um, one is named Tom Drake. Are you here in the room, Tom? All right, there's Tom Drake. I'm going to tell you his story if you haven't already heard it. Tom worked at the NSA on 9-11 and complained to his superiors and then Congress that the agency was wasting billions of dollars on inferior intelligence software, which was enormously expensive, couldn't connect the dots on terrorist threats, and contained no protections for civil liberties. 
That is an American hero. Now, Tom never broke the law or revealed classified information. It's important to note that. <laughs> Charges against him were dropped, except for one misuse of a computer. But the FBI hounded him, and his supervisors ruined his career, driving him to work at a for-profit college and then at an Apple store. Now, I, I know the story has gotten better since then. Uh, but there is such a risk associated with being a whistleblower that you often have to go into it with your eyes wide open. Now, France Gale is another whistleblower. Is France here? Well, we'll, we'll support him in absentia. But France blew the whistle on DOD's refusal to provide safe armored vehicles for our troops in Iraq leaving them vulnerable to IEDs that caused two-thirds of the American casualties in Iraq. The evidence he exposed convinced the Defense Secretary, Robert Gates, to change the equipment we deployed back in 2007. And the change saved countless lives. But despite this life-saving heroism, Gale was suspended vilified, stripped of his clearances, and isolated during a seven-year quest to get his life back, which he only managed to do last September with the help of Tom Devine of the Government Accountability Project. Tom, I think you're in the room. You stand up, please. Whistleblowers are one of the best. No, they're, they're probably the best tool we have to fight waste, fraud, abuse, and corruption. Even as a member of Congress, now I take that back, especially as a member of Congress, the inf information that agencies provide to us is sanitized and scrubbed. Now, I serve on the House Intelligence Committee. And I'm real clear that we get told precisely what they want to tell us. And we have to know how to ask the specific question to get the real answer from time to time. Now, the intelligence community is extremely important for our safety. And there's reasons for why they don't trust us from time to time, because we have loose lips. But nonetheless, scrubbed, sanitized information is not what members of Congress need to do our jobs and to make the right decisions. And it's very important for us to be skeptical of what we hear when people come to testify and ask the right questions to get the answer. So the extent to which we get scrubbed and sanitized information means that whistleblowers become incredibly powerful oracles of information for us. I've talked to hundreds of whistleblowers. They have provided me with great information that I've been able to use effectively to get abuse and corruption and waste dealt with appropriately. Now, I don't think there's enough protections for whistleblowers even today. I just got an amendment in the National Defense Authorization Act that will modernize the burden of proof for military whistleblowers claiming retaliation, giving them the same protections that federal civilian employees have. Now, you would think that would be a no-brainer. And yet, it took a specific amendment to the NDAA to get that in. And before that, they did not have the same protections as other federal employees. I'm working now with Senator Barbara Boxer 
in legislation called the Legal Justice for Service Members Act, uh, which we introduced to further increase whistleblower protection in the DOD. And we haven't gone far enough in terms of protecting members in the intelligence community. Um, and that's another area that I intend to work on. So I want to thank all of you who work in this space. Um, thank you for recognizing the key value that whistleblowers have. Thank you for coming to us with your recommendations and your suggestions. Um, and thank you for all the sacrifices that you make on behalf of the American people. My final words to you are simple. Keep us honest. Thank you.